and people around the world who are living in extreme poverty right now, which is defined as less than $1.90 per day. Um, and 385 million of those people are children. Um, and, you know, one of the issues is that they do not have a, a they don't have access to, you know, sustainable employment, a steady source of income. And so they're not able to, you know, send their kids to school and they're not able to put food on the table consistently. And it just caused a lot of systemic problems that keep flooding out for generations. And so that's where we come in. So we have a three-step approach to trying to wear out poverty um, and help where we can. Um, and one of those is protecting the environment. So, you know, if you think of what you do with your shoes now, you know, if you wear them and you decide that you don't like them anymore or, or old navy has a sale and you buy a new pair well what happens to that old pair and so um, one of the reasons we um, you know exist and um, advertise out is that we want people to you know instead of throwing away your shoes that you don't wear anymore that you don't care for you know give them to us because we're able to repurpose them and actually you know give people hope with those shoes um, and when we do get your shoes through micro we're able to create economic opportunities um, so micro enterprise is just another word for small business and so the entrepreneurs that we work with um, in developing countries around the world are able to create sustainable jobs through selling your shoes um, to be able to consistently put food on the table and do the things that they need to do. Um, and that program also helps serve people in need um, directly through our short term relief program, which is the free distribution. And that's where we work with large retail companies like Adidas and Stride Ride to procure brand new product. And that's the product that we distribute all around the world and for natural disasters. Um, so this next slide is just a little pretty much everything I just said. So it's just our impact by the numbers. Um, so we have kept 42 million pounds of shoes and clothing out of landfills, um, which is great for Mother Earth. Um, we have distributed more than 30 million pairs of new shoes um, directly to people who need them. Um, and we've served 127 countries. Um, and then half of our free distribution efforts are done here in the US. We always have a, a list a mile long of nonprofit organizations around the world who are just like, hey, we really need shoes. What can you do to help? And we honestly find trouble keeping up. Um, so like I mentioned, there are two main ways to that we you know work to wear out poverty. And so the first is the micro enterprise program, um, which I said is the long-term solution to poverty. So like I had mentioned, micro enterprise just means small business. And I know through my talks with other Rotarians that you guys probably already know a whole lot about micro enterprise. Um, but feel free to stop me at any time if you guys have questions about it. Um, but micro enterprise, another word for small business. And so the way that this, the way that this works, um, we have both direct partners and then indirect partners. And just to give you an example of how it works, I was in Haiti last year my first international distribution trip where I got to meet some of our entrepreneurs. And so we worked through a nonprofit organization on the ground called the Haitian American Caucus, um, where we were able to work with them and sell the shoes that you guys donate, your gently worn shoes for about a dollar a pair, um, because it does, you know, it costs money to send shoes to Haiti and then of course to run our organization and, and host the free distribution program. So on average, the shoes get sold for about a dollar a pair to these nonprofit organizations on the ground. Um, and then those nonprofit organizations identify vulnerable women, uh, people in the community. Most of the time it is women. Um, who are in need of these economic opportunities. And so they take them in and they teach them how to be an entrepreneur. So they teach them how to budget their money and they teach them how to set up a shop in the marketplace and they teach them the safe way to get home at night with your money so that no one takes it from you. Um, and so they really, you know, teach them and empower them to, you know, set up a small business. And so what these women end up selling, uh, which you can see one of our entrepreneurs there on the slide, um, are your shoes. So the shoes that you wore for six months and you never liked how they fit or they don't match any of your outfits. Those are creating, you know, sustainable jobs for people who, who are really looking for an opportunity to better themselves and their families. And so repurposing your shoes um, is a resource to help entrepreneurs generate income to provide for themselves and their families. And then these are, as of right now, these are the places where we have direct micro enterprise programs. So it works just like I had mentioned in Haiti with the Haitian American caucus. They identify women, the women are given the shoes on micro loans. 
So they keep a portion of the shoes, um, the funds from the shoes, and so does the nonprofit. So the Haitian American Caucus was actually just able to add a second story to their school because of the funds they generated through this program. So, you know, it's not only helping us be able to do free distribution, it's not only helping, you know, the women at the, uh, at the end of the line trying to, you know, provide for their families, but it's also helping the nonprofit on the ground be able to expand their operations. And so we're currently in um, Haiti, Honduras, Sierra Leone, Transnistria, which is by Moldova in Eastern Europe, um, Nicaragua, and we are about to open Two more, I believe. Um, our CEO and COO actually just got back yesterday um, from a 12-day stint in Africa, going to a couple of different countries um, to see where we could have expand our operations. And then, real, real quick, if someone wants to unmute, this is playing a video. Will it play on your all's end? Yes. Oh, okay. This is going to show that for you. The majority of Haitians economically, I think the, the best word I could use is tough. Tough to put food on the table, uh, tough to send their kids to, to a school, tough to keep a roof over their heads. People are struggling, but people are also looking for opportunities to do better for themselves. Marianne joined our micro lending program over two years ago. And when I first met Marianne, she was facing eviction and things were looking very dim for Marianne. Oui, je devais pas porter plus parce que ça que ça arrive plus ça arrive sans son régulier pour pas travailler. Il va faire moins de mois, il va travailler, il va se barrer dans les bouquets. On peut dire là avec ce que vous dites pour la plus. I saw the hope that these folks had when um, they were given a small loan. And it was almost as if they were telling us, you know, I dare you to trust me. I, I promise and I guarantee that I will show you greatness. Since joining our microfinancing program, um, Marianne is able, was able to buy herself a plot of land. Marianne is now in the process of building her own home. Just so much things has, has happened uh, for Marianne and to see her spirit and her dedication is amazing. I think if Soul to Soul is able to, to offer them a consistent flow of good quality merchandise, I think it will really be life changing. So I think there is definitely hope and I think programs like this should be supported. Nope. Make sure I'm going to the next slide. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, perfect. So I'm glad that I was able to show that video and you guys watched along with me. Um, so Sam actually helps run the Haitian American Caucus. Um, and Marianne was, at, uh, was one of our entrepreneurs and I was able to meet her and Jeanette when I was in Haiti. So these are real people. They're not actors or actresses and they you know are sharing a true a real their real story and so like you saw Marianne was able to you know overcome eviction and help pull her family out of poverty and send her school her kid to university um, and buy a piece of land and start to build a house and that is um, that's unheard of in Haiti and so and she was able to do that through our micro enterprise program with your used shoes um, and so you also saw in the video that how the, so the marketplace is going to look different in just about every country. Micro programs look different in every country, but you saw in the video in Haiti how it's these open air markets where all of the, you know, shoes and other merchandise are laid out and people pick what they want and they buy it and it's kind of chaotic. Um, but something to note that we're, the areas that we're in, that these markets are in, that these women are setting up shop in are in need of this merchandise. And so I just wanted to Throw that out there just in case you guys, um, you know, had thought or before you do that, because um, there's also sometimes a concern of are you putting tailors out of business, you know, is this bad um, for the area that we're in. And so we make sure that, you know, we're doing the research that the shoes are actually going to open air markets where this this kind of merchandise definitely is needed. Um, and so on this next slide, it's a little bit more of the impact, but it shows you it kind of makes it more tangible. 
um, of what your shoes could really do in places like Haiti. And so the sale of one pair of shoes can provide five meals um, for Mariage and her family in Haiti. Um, 20 pairs of shoes sold can actually provide a year of housing for Jeanette and her family in Haiti. Um, and then 30 pairs of shoes can provide one year of schooling for Tracy's daughter in Honduras. So just to kind of show you, put it in some numbers of what exactly one pair of shoes could mean. And then switching back a little bit. So the second part of what we do is our free distribution side. So I talked about, so this is if a school in Chicago really needs new shoes for their kids or there's an orphanage in Uganda that needs new shoes or there's a, a hurricane that comes in and, and unfortunately wipes out a lot of homes and people are in need, we're able to respond because of this program, um, which is our short-term relief. And that is when we partner with, like I said, bigger organizations or corporate organizations um, like Adidas and Stride Right and New Balance to where we're given their brand new shoes and brand new merchandise um, for specifically for this purpose. And so all of the shoes that you guys collect and donate, gently worn shoes, go into micro enterprise programs to create sustainable jobs. And that program also helps fund the transportation of these new shoes. So when a hurricane strikes and we need to send a trailer load of brand new shoes and clothes to Texas, um, that's, that funding that we procure from micro enterprise programs helps make that happen, helps us be able to get a truck driver on the road and get the truck where it needs to be. And so um, we have worked with over 1200 nonprofit partners to distribute brand new shoes. Um, and like I said, they're donated through retailers and manufacturers and we're able to immediately respond kind of um, so I would think of the long term solution as a long term solution and the short term kind of like putting a band aid on it for now the way that I like to describe micro and people ask, why do you do it that way. Um, so Tracy, which you just saw on the little bubble to the right, um, her daughter. Um, you know, she's, she's very young, so we can give her a pair of shoes and we're absolutely always going to give her a pair of shoes. But in six months when her daughter grows out of those shoes and Tracy doesn't have an income to buy another pair of shoes to put her in school, there's still a problem. And so that's why we come at, you know, poverty from two angles from the short term relief and also the long term relief. Um, and then this kind of goes into a little bit more than what we had already talked about what new shoes really mean for people. Um, a, if you walk all day long, you get their parasites that get in your feet and you have cuts and scrapes and a lot of bacteria and it causes a lot of disease and illness. Um, a lot of the places that we work in, children are not allowed to attend school unless they have a plain black pair of shoes. And so we're able to respond with that through Bob's. Um, like I said, disaster relief and then empowerment too. So we work with a lot of homeless shelters um, who where we serve the people who are, you know, out there trying to look for a job, but they just simply do not have a pair of work boots or they don't have a pair of shoes that they can wear to an interview. And so that's where we're able to respond to help people get back on their feet. And then here is another short video when we help the Louisiana flood victims. One day you live living like this, the next day you have nothing. I've never seen this type of impact unless it was on television or on a movie, but never expected to experience it myself, no. We're here today in Baton Rouge, and it's amazing that we're able to be here and be a part of this. We're blessed that there are people like those for souls. It's a good thing and it's a great thing that these types of programs are in place. They're so excited for souls for souls for coming out to help them. A lot of them left their home with only a pair of shoes and their only outfit on. I came to get some items because I don't have nothing. I lost it all in a flood. You see them in a wheelchair and I was kind of afraid because the water was like, when Simon came in the house, I really was scared. And because I couldn't get out of the wheelchair, I lost all my clothes and everything. There are so many stories of people who have lost everything, and they're here volunteering to help other people. It's really sort of been an amazing day to think about the loss that's happened to so many of the people, and yet they're here ready to try to help those who have lost even more than they have. Just to wake up one day and your house being underwater, it was a scary experience. I try my best to help others because it gets me off of me losing so much. I had one customer come in, a 
uh, she figured that she wore 13, that they didn't have a 13. And so she came in and I helped her and she walked out with a new pair of shoes and now she's just excited. So just thank you for that. It's extremely meaningful and that people show love to each other. And that there's someone reaching out to us who don't have anything and giving us hope. It's hard to imagine the devastation that's happened here when you see the people and how they're volunteering and interacting with each other, that they have overcome that so quickly. It's really been a moving day. It's a sad experience for everyone, but a learning one as well because it has brought everybody together. So that just shows just kind of the impact that, you know, our free distribution um, has. And so, you know, you guys knowing that, you know, the shoes that you guys donate, they're not, you're not only helping with micro enterprise programs um, and creating small businesses, you're also help funding that program. So it's really cool to see everything come full circle. Um, and so these are just a different, oh, a couple of different ways that you guys can get involved. And I know I'd mentioned that. Um, so primarily where I work um, is with people hosting shoe drives. And so it's a really simple way to get involved. In my opinion, is the easiest way to get involved. Um, but it is where you, you know, challenge the other members in your Rotary Club. Um, you guys decide you want to go for a pair, uh, a goal of 50 pairs of shoes or something like that. Or you get your church involved and your kids' schools involved. Um, or it's as simple as you guys cleaning out your closet and then donating the shoes that you no longer wear or haven't worn in six months to Souls for Souls so that we can continue with that mission, um, you know, donating, and then also um, a distribution trip. So the distribution trip in Haiti that I talked about that I took last year, um, those are actually public trips. And so we take a lot of people, I think we would lead about 15, don't quote me, um, trips a year, public trips. We also have private ones where, you know, people from around the world want to come with us and actually serve alongside us. And so they'll go with us to Costa Rica or Morocco or Haiti or Honduras, um, even to Arizona here in the U.S. to wash some feet and fit people for new shoes and play with the kids. And so that's another way that you guys could get involved. Um, but yeah, that is my presentation. So I just wanted to kind of give you guys a rundown of what we do and more importantly why we do it and then give you guys these are ways if you all wanted to get involved we'd be honored to work with you in the future and and yeah that's how it works so if you guys have any questions at all i will open it up thank you so much lydia that was a great presentation um the floor is open now if anyone has any questions please feel free to ask you're unmuted uh, do they have any office in India? We have any offices. So we don't have any offices in India. So we are, we're trying to branch out more and create like many souls for souls is <laughs> around everywhere. And so we actually started that project last year um, and we created remote um, locations of ours in um, Richmond, Virginia, Denver, Colorado, Atlanta, Georgia, um, Riverside, California. We just opened up Toronto and Dallas and Texas. So we're trying to create more remote locations. We don't have any outside um, of the U.S. or Canada yet, but we're definitely looking to. But I know for sure that we work with um, different nonprofit organizations to distribute new shoes in India. I know that we, our, our travel team is looking to create a travel trip where you guys would be able to, I know you're in India, so would be able to join us on distributing shoes where they're needed. And so that's definitely something that I could send you guys information, you information on so that's what you're looking for. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, okay. so this, this is Marge. Hello, Marge. Hi, how are you? Um, so if, when people do the, the shoe drives and they collect, you know, X number of pairs of shoes, what's the process for getting them to you? Yes, so that is a great question. So we have, um, I'm trying to take notes. Um, so we have where, warehouse locations um, all around the country, all around the world. I use air quotes because they're not all warehouses. Um, so a lot of the times they're a storage unit or someone's garage that they aren't using at the moment and they store shoes for us. And so, um, but we have locations all around, um, like I said, all around the world, primarily in the U.S. where you guys could drop off or ship your shoes. 
And then if you do happen to be too far from a location, we actually currently have a program with Zappos for Good where you can ship your shoes to us for free. So, <laughs> pretty easy. So you would be able to share with us where in our area where, um, or in other areas we can actually, is there like a directory or? Yeah, absolutely. So we have, I'm going to write that down so I can send that to you guys. Um, we have a zip code lo locator where it will pull up all of our warehouses close to you. Um, we don't have any in your state at the moment. Um, that is actually one of my top priority list because I really need to find a location for someone to store shoes in your area. So if you know anybody, send them my way. Um, but I think the closest thing to you guys would be either in Atlanta or Nashville. But again, we do have free shipping. Um, in case you just happen to be planning a trip to Nashville, then you can come and visit us. Okay. Hey, Lydia, this is uh, Lonnie. Um, well, hi. Um, we have a couple of, well, I work with a couple of youth organizations and um, how do we, is there a presentation that you have that I can share with them? I mean, the one that you shared tonight was really good. Um, so how, how do I present, I mean, your mission and information to uh, the youth group to maybe have them take on a project like this? Yeah, absolutely. Like Sorry. I said, or would you like to present to the youth group? Yeah, I can totally do that. Also, I can send you, um, I can send you this presentation and a couple of videos. So we have a couple of videos that I could outline that really, I mean, of course, I can always do it, but I stutter a little bit. So if you would want um, a video that would maybe explain it a little easier in a three minute window, um, I can send those to you guys too. Um, we have a lot of like churches who will share those videos on Sunday morning and, you know, say, hey, we're collecting shoes and this is why, and they push play um, and it shows mariage in Haiti and explains what this means for, the for you, uh, for people in these countries. And then we also have a couple of videos, depending on how old they are, um, are more youth oriented. And so it has more fun music and really breaks the mission down step by step, even with cartoons. So I could send you guys those videos too, just so you can look at them and then you can decide what you want to do. Any other questions? Have you yeah, guys well, ever, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Hey, hey, Lydia, if we, you know, if there's not a great devastation that takes place, but we have identified areas of high need for, um, for the items that you have available for distribution. I mean, is that something you would consider doing? Uh, like for instance, setting, setting up at a school that's in a high poverty area, urban area to say, hey, we're gonna do this distribution. I mean, what, what's the criteria, I guess, for you setting up shop to do a distribution? So, um this is, I don't want to, I don't want to misspeak, but I do know that it needs to be a, like a qualifying nonprofit organization for a 501c3. Um, for us, yeah. to I know we also do a lot with back to school. Um, so there may be some different avenues to take there. Um, but what I just took a note to is to, I can give you guys our director of outreach, Tiffany uh, Turner. She actually handles every single one of our distribution. So all 1200 of those nonprofits, everything actually goes through her um, and she manages the entire operation with that. Um, so I can pass along her contact info and there's a couple of papers that you guys would need to fill out um, to request the shoes. Like what sizes do you need? When do you need them by? Um, and then, but that's definitely something that we could start working on with you guys. Have you guys ever, um, do you guys do a lot? I know that everything with Rotarians is very service oriented, um, but have you guys done collection drives like this before or what do you guys normally do? Well, I don't know that there's anything you say, quote unquote, normal, <laughs> but we have done um, collections for um, purses. Um, we did that purses for a purpose for a fundraiser. Um, I believe we um, had books as well. So we've had various things. Um, I'm sure others in our district have also participated in some type of drive, um, but I don't know about shoes. Is anyone able to speak about 
shoes that they know of. Yes, I, I was about to make the point. You know, it's quite, uh, quite. I mean, uh, quite innovative. The uh, soul for souls, because in any natural calamity, people always bother about food and clothes and medications, but none of them actually bother about the footwear, and which is so important, especially situations like that where the terrain is going to be bad, and then you know there'll be a lot of you know, as you said, that you know, a lot of footborne infections or you know, glass pieces everywhere or rubble. And it's very important to have a good, I mean, or whatever, at least a decent footwear for them to walk through the disaster. But I think Vivia, it's a great initiator. And then, I mean, it's, it's a great call. I think it's first of its kind probably I ever heard. And, um, and I think uh, even we had a recently natural disaster in Kerala state where almost, I think, a few hundreds of villages went under the water. And um, there were about 400 people who lost their lives. And uh, close to maybe 30,000 to 40,000 people or maybe more than a lakh people lost homes. So I was just wondering, you know, like probably how are they going to manage like, uh, I mean, uh, these things. Um, so I wish, you know, we have a situation, I mean, or we have a setup like that, what you've set up back in the U.S. And then you know, we could help those people who are in need over here. And we wish you good luck and then we, we try to do something over here, you know, I think we'll just take up your idea probably. Go for it. Yeah. No, that's, that's completely right. And so we are what, what's called second wave responders. So like you said, um, you know, clean water and food are the, the two pro top priorities. And so first Absolutely. wave responders come in with that um, because that's obviously the initial need. And then, um, and then we're second wave responders. So we come in with like new underwear and new shirts and pants and of course, brand new shoes and shots, um, because it's right. something that maybe you don't immediately think of that you need, but it's something that everybody definitely needs. Yeah. Great. Uh, this is Rich. Uh, Lydia, we actually did do a sneaker drive, um, with athletic drive, where we were trying to get um, for kids sort of decent brand names so that they, they, them, they wouldn't be embarrassed by having crummy used shoes in school. Um, and it, it didn't go over that well, simply because, you know, we're a, we were a small group. Uh, we treated it as though it were a flash in the pan activity. It's, it's going to do it. But this, what you're doing requires a lot of preparation and time to, to um, hit upon the donors uh, that you're going to try to reach. The commercial sector isn't going to just allow you to walk into a store and say, hey, we could use some shoes. They're not going to give them to you. You're, they're going to say, yes, get in line. And here's a telephone number you might want to contact our headquarters. And you know, you put in your application, and three months later or four months later, you might hear back from us. So th there, there's a, a long uh, percolation time for you know to, to to get to where we were hoping to get. Um, it's for a small group like ours. It, you know, we, we could never really do anything as grand as as we'd hoped. Yeah, sure. Well, I'm sure you guys definitely, you know, did make a difference and that's a great idea and you um, are absolutely right. It takes, it can take forever and we, our corporate um, procurement team has actually spent years and years and years trying to get um, in with, you know, the right contacts and to, um, you know, really be able to work with big companies like Adidas and Stride, right, to where now things are starting to move a little smoother um, for us. But really, it takes it takes a while to build relationships and make connections. Um, but thankfully, we do. Um, over the years, we've developed, you know, a corporate sect of Pulse for Souls, where that's all they do all day is work with and develop uh, relationships with these brands. Um, and then the reason that I like shoes, and I feel like it's so easy, is because it, again, it's not, you know, we're not asking anybody to go out and pitch Adidas or, you know, ask for you to go and buy brand new Nike shoes or anything like that. It's really the shoes that are sitting in your closet right now that I'm sure everybody has um, that you just haven't worn in the last little bit that you don't see yourself wearing and that somebody else definitely, you know, could get use of them out of micro enterprise programs. And so it's a pretty easy ask, like having people like bring in one pair of shoes and then we mm -hmm. do the hard work or, you know, the hard part of like working, like you said, with Adidas and stuff like that through the years. 
With that, thank you so much, Lydia. We really appreciate your presentation. Again, sharing with us about Souls for Souls and what um, good you're doing in, um, in the world. <laughs> Service above self. Um, so I would like to go ahead and share my screen to um, thank you. We have a little here. I'm going to um, can you see my screen? Lydia, are you still there? Yes. Can, can you guys okay. hear me? Okay. Yeah, now I can. So yes, this is a thank you to you, to Lydia Dowdell for her opportunity. This is our virtual certificate. <laughs> oh, I'm going to take a picture of it. Hold on just a second. <laughs> Put it on the refrigerator. <laughs> Thank you for the time that you've spent in sharing your um, the, the work that you're doing with Souls for Souls. And with that said, I'd like to go ahead and um, have the four-way test for our Rotary Club. Um, I'd like to have MG, if you could read the four-way test for us, that would be great. Uh, is, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendship? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you. Thank you. And again, with that said, we'd like to um, thank everyone for joining tonight. Um, I stopped the recording and I realized that I, um, I'm going to stop sharing as well. I realized that I have failed to um, have MG introduce our newest member, KP. So I want to give him some time to do that. I want to thank Lydia again for her presentation, but we're going to switch gears real quick and have an introduction for um, our newest member, KP. So MG, could you introduce KP to the group, to the club? All right, it'll be my pleasure. Uh, KP, uh, is now an orthopedic surgeon in, uh, in Hyderabad. He has just come back from England after doing his FRCS. So